Hello and welcome back to my channel. Today I'm sharing these floating shelves. This space looked completely different than what it does now. It used to have a built-in like corner cabinet thing going on. Definitely a 2000s, early 2000s design where our TV would be in there and it was like a big tube TV so it took up a lot of space. In remodeling our living room, I decided that that needed to go. So it did not fit with the rest of the, the vibe of the room. And so I added the horizontal shiplap, painted it all black, and I added these floating shelves. I ripped out the corner cabinet completely and added the floating shelves. So if you have a space like that, that you're looking to bring up to date, this would be a great idea for that. It provides a lot more options for decorating and maybe even storage. We store some blankets in here and we have some poofs down at the bottom that we pull out when we have a lot of people over. It's a great addition to our living room. It's a very easy build. I will say that floating shelves have always kind of intimidated me before I ever built them because I was like, how did how do you get those things to really stay in place and make them sturdy? It is an easy build though. Once you figure out the mechanics of it and how it actually happens, it's just two by fours that you're putting into studs. You're building two by fours off of that and then you're wrapping those two by fours with your plywood. I face mine with a one by to give it just a, a nicer look on the very, very front. It truly is that easy. Definitely a simple build. Now would be a good time to hit that like button and subscribe. Here's a quick peek at that corner cabinet before I tore it out. Look at all of that space that freed up. First, I cut all of my two by fours down to two by threes. If you don't have a table saw or a circular saw, you can skip this step and just use two by fours. For one 61 inch long floating shelf, you're going to cut five two by fours at 17 and a half inches each. Then you're going to drill one and a half inch pocket holes into one end of each of these two by fours. These are called your cleats. Now you're ready to cut your stretcher. Cut a two by four to 61 inches. Attach the five cleats to the stretcher using two and a half inch pocket hole screws. Space the cleats out approximately 12 inches from one another. You'll only have one of these if you're making one floating shelf. However, I was making five floating shelves for next to my fireplace. If you're hanging multiple shelves like I was, you're going to want to figure out the spacing between each shelf. I found it easiest to cut scrap wood and use them as spacers so that I didn't have to fight against gravity for my shelves. Using your spacers to set the support on, you're going to work your way up the wall. Attach each support with two and a half inch wood screws. Make sure that you're attaching your screws into the wall studs. Be sure to use a level to ensure each support is straight. As you can see in this video, I'm using the spacers as guides to see where each support is going to be attached. Here's a look at all five shelf supports attached and ready for plywood to be wrapped around them. Now you're ready to cut your plywood to fit the top and bottom of each support. You'll need a table saw or a circular saw for this step. If you don't have a table saw or a circular saw, Home Depot can make your cuts for you when you purchase your plywood. Cut your spacers just enough to fit the bottom sheet of plywood to the underside of the support. Once again, this is to help you work against gravity and it will make it a lot easier to attach the bottom of the shelf plywood while the spacer is holding it up for you. Working your way up the wall, face the top and bottom of each support with plywood, cut to fit, using one and a half inch wood screws to attach. Rip one by four pine boards to cover perfectly the fronts of each support. While the dimensions of each of these should be very similar, you're gonna wanna cut them to fit. This will make sure that you have the exact measurements needed. 
working your way up the wall, add a front board to cover each support. Fill all of your nail holes with wood filler, then run over them with a 220 grit sandpaper block. And now you're ready for stain. I used Verathane Golden Oak stain for my floating shelves. And that's it. Decorate your shelves and step back and admire your handiwork. Don't forget to ring that bell and subscribe for more great content.